In this video, we'll be covering Excel services in SharePoint 2013. My name is Tavis Lovell and I'll be your narrator for the remainder of this video. If you need to reach out to me, you can find me at tavis.lovell at rackspace.com, on my blog at www.tavislevel.com, or on Twitter at Tavis Lovell. In this video, we're going to talk about what Excel services is used for in terms of business intelligence at a high level. We'll step through the prerequisites you'll need in order to complete this tutorial. And finally, we'll walk through creating our own Excel services workbook and uploading it to SharePoint. So let's start by talking about what Excel services is used for. In its simplest form, Excel services allows users to view Excel workbooks uploaded to SharePoint directly inside of the browser. This enables users to view Excel documents even if they don't have Microsoft Excel installed on their local machine. In terms of BI, Excel services is an easy to use ad hoc reporting tool for end users. It allows you to create workbooks that are connected to a variety of external data sources, including SQL Server databases and SQL Server Analysis Services cubes. Once connected to a data source, the workbook can then be refreshed, so you can be sure you're always looking at the most current data. One of the biggest advantages to using Excel services as your reporting tool is that more than likely, most users are already familiar with Excel at some level. This translates to a small learning curve in terms of users being able to create and navigate Excel services reports. One last point to note about Excel services is that you will need to have a SharePoint Enterprise license in order to take advantage of these features in your SharePoint environment. In order to successfully complete this tutorial, you'll need to have the following prerequisites. A SharePoint 2013 environment with Excel services already configured. This includes setting up and associating an unattended service account. This configuration will not be covered in this video, however, it is covered in depth in the Business Intelligence chapter of the ROX publication titled Professional SharePoint 2013 Administration. Secondly, you'll need to have the AdventureWorks DW2012 sample database installed and the appropriate permissions needed to read data and create database views inside of the database. The AdventureWorks sample database can be downloaded for free at the link shown in the slide. Last but not least, you'll need to have Office 2013 installed in order to create the Excel workbook. Before we start the tutorial, let's take a quick look at what our goal is. In this example, we want to create a report that pulls data from our AdventureWorks database for internet sales that have occurred within the United States. In the chart at the top, we want to show internet sales by both category and subcategory. And in the pivot table below, we want users to be able to drill down into a subcategory to reveal the individual products that make up that subcategory. Last but not least, we want users to be able to filter on both category, subcategory, and by the state that the sale happened in. Now that we've got our goal in mind, let's build this workbook from the ground up. The first thing we're going to want to do here is open up SQL Server Management Studio and connect to the database server where our AdventureWorks database is located. In my case, that server name is just SQL, and we'll click Connect. And we should see our AdventureWorks database here. There we go. I've gone ahead and written a query ahead of time that's going to pull all the data we want to show in our Excel services report. Now, uh, you can pause the screen and type all this out, or you could go to www.rackspace.com slash SharePoint dash BI, and there should be a link on that page to download this file. Let's take a quick look at what this view is pulling. You can see we're pulling the category, the subcategory, the product name, the state that the sale occurred in, and the sales amount. And remember, we're only pulling for sales that happened in the US. So let's go ahead and create this view by clicking on Execute. And we see the command completed successfully, so we should now see our view uh, inside of our AdventureWorks database. And right there it is. So we're good to go on this front. Let's go ahead and close SQL Server Management Studio. And then we want to open up Excel 2013. Now I'm just going to create a blank workbook here. And the first thing we want to do is connect to the database view that we just created. So to do that, we'll click on the Data tab. 
and then from other sources, and then from SQL Server. And we'll want to type in our server name and click Next. And then we'll select both our database and the view or table we want to pull from. And then click Next. We're going to accept the default file name and descriptions here, but we do want to change the authentication settings. So let's go ahead and click on this button. And then we want to change this selection to None. Now what this is going to do is when we upload our workbook to SharePoint later, it's going to use the unattended service account to go out and pull this data. Now if that doesn't make sense to you, uh, all this is covered in the Rocks book titled Professional SharePoint 2013 Administration in the BI section and I do highly recommend reading that chapter. All right, we're going to go ahead and click OK here and then finish. And then Excel is going to prompt us about how we want to display our data. We're going to select Pivot Chart and then click OK. Now this creates both a pivot chart and a pivot table here. And we're going to start putting data in our chart. Now we know we want to show sales amount, so we'll select that. And then we want to show it by both category and subcategory. So that's really uh, the chart that we wanted to make here. However, if you remember from our goal, the uh, pivot table that we made, we wanted users to also be able to drill down into the subcategory so that could, they could see the individual products that make up that subcategory. To do that, we're going to need to create a, another pivot table and then we'll end up hiding this original one. But that's kind of a good excuse to show you how you can hide uh, certain items in an Excel workbook when you upload the workbook to SharePoint. So let's go ahead and create a new sheet by clicking on the plus sign down here. And we'll rename this real quick to US Internet Sales. And my computer is catching up here. Okay, there we go. And then we're going to go back and cut out this chart by right clicking on it and then selecting cut. And then we're going to place it over on the new sheet that we created. Let's do just a little bit of size formatting here. All right, that looks good. Uh, the next thing we want to do is create our new pivot table. So we'll just click on an empty cell where we want our pivot table to show up. And then we'll go to insert up at the top and then pivot table. Now we want to use the same connection that we created right when we opened up this workbook. So we'll click use an external data source and then choose connection and use the connection that is already existing in this workbook. Then click OK out and you'll see we've created our pivot table down here. Uh, next we'll go ahead and populate that with data by selecting sales amount, the category, the product subcategory, and then also the product name. Now you can see that all the subcategories are expanded. That's a little bit inconvenient, so we can go ahead and collapse these as the default view by right-clicking on the subcategory, then going to expand collapse, and then collapse entire field. And that should take care of that. All right, the last thing we want to do here is add some slicers so users are able to filter on the data that they're looking at. So to do that, we're going to click on the chart and then click on the Insert tab at the top and then click on Slicers. And all we really want to do here is select the items that we want users to be able to filter on. So Category, Subcategory, and then State, and then click OK. And we'll do just a quick bit of formatting here. There we go. And we should see now when we filter things here that those changes are reflected in the chart. But note that they're not reflected in the pivot table below. So to get that to work, we're going to need to do a 
a little bit more work here. We'll right click on the category slicer and then go to report connections. And we want to select the pivot table two item here. Click OK. And now when we filter on category, both the chart and table are being filtered. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat that process for both subcategory and state. Okay, uh, we've got really the basic functionality that we had in our original report that we wanted to create. All that's really left to do is icing on the cake in terms of formatting. So let's go down to our data grid here and let's create some data bars on our report. So we'll highlight all the numbers here and then go to home and then conditional formatting and data bars and then we'll select blue and that'll give us data bars in our data grid. And we also need to change the numbers here to currency. So I'll select one of the numbers and then go down here to our value and value field settings and then number format and select currency and we'll drop this down to zero decimal places and then click OK back out. And we'll repeat that for the chart at the top as well. Okay, I can rename the title here to US Internet Sales. And you'll remember the chart looked a little bit different in our uh, original report. So if we click on the chart and then go up here to design, we have a whole bunch of different options up here that we can use for charts. I think I used this one originally. Click on that. And there we have it. Our report is complete. All that's left to do is to upload this report to SharePoint. So we'll need to save it by clicking on File. And then we'll go to Browser View Options first. Now, we wanted to hide Sheet 1 and only show US Internet Sales. So to do that, we can, instead of having the entire workbook selected, we'll select Sheets and then deselect Sheet 1. And click OK. And then we'll go ahead and save our workbook to our desktop. Uh, just book one is fine here. Well, we'll rename it book one video. And click save. And then we can go ahead and close this. Next we'll want to open up our SharePoint site that we want to upload our document to. And I've already created a document library called Video Demo. We just need to click on the New Document link over here and then Upload Existing File. And then browse to our file that we want to upload. Ours was Book One Video. Click Open and then click OK. And there's our workbook. So to open it, we'll just click on it. And we'll see our report in here and we should be able to test out the filters and make sure everything works. It does appear to. Uh, also, we will want to check our data refresh to make sure that everything is coming in correctly. So if we go up to the top and click on data and then refresh all connections. And that was pretty fast, but um, it did go out and fetch the data. We don't have any changes to our data since we've created this workbook, so we're not really going to see any changes reflected. But uh, that pretty much sums it up for our Excel services tutorial. Again, my name is Tavis Lovell, and thanks for watching.